Hi, and welcome to our brief guide to configuring and using the Net Support Gateway. Probably appropriate to start by confirming the purpose of the Net Support Gateway, and it's used for a number of products supplied by Net Support, first and foremost for Net Support Manager Remote Control, and the Gateway acts as an intermediary where we want to have access from the control software, that's the software used on any PC or mobile tablet that we wish to perform remote control from, through to any computer that has the NetSport client installed, and that's installed on each PC that we wish to be able to perform remote control on. Now in a normal network environment, the control can browse the local network via TCP IP, discover clients and connect to them. There's a different scenario, of course, when the control user is on the road on their laptop or we want to manage computers at different sites where the only communications between them is the internet. So the gateway acts as a secure intermediary allowing traffic as HTTP to pass securely through the gateway to allow us to identify and connect to NetSport Manager remote clients. At the current time you'll see the gateway console is empty, there are no connected clients to it. So having installed the software for the first time, what we need to do is step our way through the configuration options. If we select our file, you'll see we have a configure gateway option, and that will present us, when we say yes, with our main configuration utility. Now the first page is really specific to networking requirements, and most of these options you shouldn't need to modify unless you have some specific requirements, but we will touch on the key items. So one key item is the default port that our gateway will be listening on. By default it's set to 443, but depending on your own network requirements, if you wish, you can modify the port to suit your own requirements. Similarly, you can also choose to specify specific IP interfaces and ports that you wish to be listening on. At the bottom, we have a reference to our event log, and as you'd expect from a communications gateway, we have the ability to record a detailed audit trail of each and every connection and activity that occurs through the gateway. Again, here you can control the location of that event log file, and if you wish, you can set limits onto the maximum size that log file can grow to. Our first tab we move along to is our keys tab, and as you'd expect, we want some mechanism for controlling how can and can't access and communicate through the gateway. Now the gateway keys are entered and defined here in the configuration utility and then are applied to each client that we wish to give access to so that it can be um, visible on the gateway. And similarly that key is used by an operator using the control software to give them the ability to actually connect and browse the gateway for available computers. To add a key we simply provide a description and then choose to set a gateway key where we can specify that key information and once set you'll see we now have one key. It's important to note we can have multiple gateway keys here and these can be then used to segment which clients are visible to which operators. So the gateway can, only, can also be used not just for one organization but potentially can be used where we're providing remote support services to a number of different offices or organizations. Similarly, we have an Operators tab, and the Operators tab allows us to add an extra layer of granularity and control to the gateway usage. In essence, we can specify usernames and passwords for individual staff or help desk operators that have access to the gateway, and again, we can then control specifically who can be authenticated and utilize the gateway. So we can either restrict access and only allow specific operators, and if we do that, we're prompted to add an operator name, a full name, and of course, a password for each user. If we have that option unchecked, then we're utilizing the key to control behavior that's coming in and out of our gateway. We have a third option, which is our redundancy tab. Now, if our gateway is our central intermediary point that's allowing communication from inside or outside of our network to remote computers, we do have the ability to build in some redundancy to the product and allow the gateway to operate as a secondary gateway. The essence is if we select this option, we can specify the IP address and port details of the primary gateway. And if for some reason the primary gateway becomes unavailable, 
this secondary gateway will take over as the primary gateway for a duration and any clients and controls will automatically redirect to the secondary gateway. So this allows us to build in a level of redundancy into the product. Within our license management console, you'll see that we have our current 10 user Netsport Manager evaluation license currently installed. This will allow a maximum of 10 PCs to connect to the gateway at any given time. But of course we can add in here our permanent purchase license. In addition, we could stack multiple licenses that are available. Finally, under our security tab, you can see that we can force encryption for all communications that are accessing and coming through our gateway. And we can also block any computers that don't have encryption enabled to ensure at all times security is maintained. That is the extent of the gateway configuration utility. Most organizations of a large size will pay post their gateway most typically on the DMZ, alongside things like their web server, mail server, and database servers, so that um, it is accessible from the outside world and will securely pass through data into the secure inner network. For smaller organizations, the most typical approach is to install the gateway on any target PC, and then we'll use port forwarding or NAT on their firewall or router to pass traffic through for a given port directly through to the gateway machine. Okay, so with our gateway configured, let's take a quick look at how we ensure that our Netsport Manager clients and controls can utilize it. If we jump to our Netsport Manager program group and we open our configurator on our PC, you'll see we've got a basic and an advanced mode of configuration. We'll jump to the advanced mode and we'll edit our master profile and you'll see we've got all sorts of configuration options that are available for Netsport Manager, and these are covered within our main Netsport Manager product tour. But if we jump to the HTTP tab, you'll see for our client, we have the ability to use HTTP, and here we specify the IP address of our gateway that we've just set up with a matching port. For our redundancy option, we can specify our secondary gateway address, and again, its port. And finally, we can add our gateway key to authenticate us and ensure that we're able to actually connect to the gateway. Once we apply those settings and we click OK, we'll restart our client and it will then be communicating through our gateway. If we look at our control software that's used to perform remote control, we can open the control software and you'll see down here we have an internet gateways option if we select that option, we can double click and add a gateway, give it a description, and it's support as a name and description, click next, and again, we can enter the IP address and port of our gateway. Let's put a pretend one in just so we can skip through the options. And again, the address of our secondary gateway. We can choose if we're using a proxy server. And then finally, we can set and add our gateway key. Once we've done that, and we'll create a key in here just so that it knows that we're completing the process, like so, and we say next. We can again now specify a username and password. You remember we had the option in our gateway configuration for not just a gateway key, but also individual user authentication. So this is where we'd enter that user authentication. And when we finish, you'll note we now have a gateway available to us that we can browse to discover any new computers that are available to us. As simple as that.